Hello everybody! This video is for individuals taking of introductory programming courses, specifically the use of the C programming language. In this video, I will be discussing introductory part before we proceed with the programming parts which will later be recorded as well. So let us start. Coverage, by the way, are the following. We have computer fundamentals, computer organization, programming languages, C standard library, and C program development environment. So let us start off with the first topic, which is computer fundamentals. What is a computer? A computer is an electronic device that can perform computations and make logical decisions faster than human beings can. When we say electronic, it will need an electricity for it to work. Also, a computer can perform computations, that is, a mathematical computations, by making use of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. <clears throat> computer from the root word compute. So, given a mathematical expression, a computer can give the result as long as it follows the correct instructions given to it. Aside from computation, a computer also makes logical decisions given several conditions. Take for example, determining whether a grade of a student is passing or failing. So the condition there would be uh, if the grade is greater than or equal to 75 and the grade is less than or equal to 100, then the grade of the student is a passing grade. These computations and logical decisions made by a computer is basically faster than humans and error-free as long as it follows correct instructions given to it. Take note that a computer only performs computations and make logical decisions based on the instructions given to it. So these instructions are what we call computer programs, which are created by computer programmers. One basic example that shows a computer is faster than humans, take for example, a person is given two digits and asked to give its sum, take for example, two and five, immediately the person can give the sum seven. That is because it is just a small number. But what if the, the human or the person is given a larger number? Take, for example, 129,772 plus 322,751. The person might take a few minutes or a few seconds before answering, while a computer can do it in a split of a second as long as the correct instructions is given to it by the computer programmer. Another definition of computer is that computer process data under the control of sets of instructions we call computer programs, which I have mentioned earlier. These computer programs guide the computer through orderly sets of actions specified by people called the computer programmers. So basically, Given a data, this is the input. The computer will process this data and will give us the output. So we have input, process, and output. When we say computer system, it is a complete and functional computer, which includes all the various devices called the hardware and the programs that run on a computer called the software. These are all required to make the computer functional for its users. <clears throat> a computer system should have the ability to receive data as input from the user, process data, and produce process data or what we call the output. <clears throat> now let us discuss hardware and software which makes up the computer system. So a hardware is classified into four groups. We have input device, output device, storage device, and processing unit. So, for, so we have the input device or input devices. These are the devices that we use in order to capture data from the user. We have the usual 
input devices samples are the keyboard and the mouse. The output device, on the other hand, is used for the display of our process data or output. So we have the monitor and the printer. We also have the storage device. These are the hard disk and the memory, which are used to store data captured by our input devices. And we also have the processing unit. This is the central processing unit or the CPU, which is in charge of processing our data. For the software, it is divided into two types, namely the system software and the application software. So when we say system software, this refers to our operating systems like Linux and Windows. <laughs> While application software refers to applications such as word processor, games, and the like. Take note, by the way, that an application software cannot function without a system software, but a system software can function with or without an application software. So that sums up the topic computer fundamentals. Let's now proceed with computer organization. Regardless of differences in physical appearance of our computers, virtually every computer may be imagined divided into six logical units or sections. First, we have input unit. Second, output unit. Third, memory unit. Four, arithmetic and logic unit or the ALU. Fifth, is the central processing unit or the CPU. And lastly, secondary storage unit. The input unit is considered the receiving section, wherein it obtains data and instruction from input devices such as our keyboard and mouse. These data may include the name of a person, a scanned barcode of a product, or even a voice record that will be processed or that can be processed by a computer. So any data that was captured by input devices is done in this section, the input unit. The next unit is the output unit. This is considered the shipping section. Once the data, or what we call the input, is already processed, it is now ready to be shipped or to be given back to the user as processed data or information. Raw data, which serves as our input, once processed, by the computer now becomes a process data or information and is now considered as our output. It may either be displayed on the screen, the monitor screen, it may be printed on paper, or it can be played on audio players or used to control other devices. Another unit is the memory unit. This rapid access, relatively low capacity warehouse section retains data that has been entered through the input unit, making it immediately available for processing when needed. So once the data is captured from the input unit, where will it go? It will now be stored in a memory. This is the, the work of the memory unit. It will be retained until such time that it will be processed later on. The memory unit is often called either memory or primary memory. It is a short-term memory, meaning the data here will not last. So take for example, if you turn off the computer, the data stored in the memory unit is gone. Unlike with the secondary storage unit, which will retain the data. So that sums up the topic computer organization. Let us now proceed with the next topic, programming languages. Language is the medium of communication. So in order for two parties to understand each other, there should be a common language. The English language being the universal language may be used by humans to communicate. But for a human to communicate with a machine or take for example a computer, a programming language must be utilized. 
the programming language is divided into two levels. First is the low-level language. These are categorized into machine language or assembly language. And we have the high-level language. The only language that a computer understands is the machine language, which is referred to as machine code. It generally consists of strings of binary numbers such as zeros and ones. This gives instructions to computers to perform its most elementary operation one at a time. A machine code can be directly executed by a computer. Machine language programming was simply too slow, tedious, and error-prone for most programmers since a programmer does not really use the machine language as its language. As a result, instead of using the strings of binary numbers that computers could directly understand, programmers began using English-like abbreviations to represent elementary operations. These abbreviations form the basis of assembly languages. So translator programs called assemblers are required to convert assembly language to machine code or what we call the machine language. Computer usage increased rapidly with the advent of assembly languages, but programmers still had to use many instructions to, to accomplish even the simplest task. So to speed up the programming process, high-level languages were developed in which single statements could be written to accomplish substantial tasks. The high-level languages allow programmers to write instructions that look almost like everyday English and contain commonly used mathematical notations. High-level languages are preferable to machine and assembly language. The C, C++, Microsoft, Visual Basic, and Java are among the most widely used high-level programming languages. Translator programs called the compilers now convert the high-level language programs into machine language. So that sums up programming languages. Next topic is the C standard library. In this course, we will be using the C programming language. C is a high-level, structured-oriented programming language written in assembly language and is used in general purpose programming. It was developed by Dennis Ritchie at AT&T Bell Labs in USA between 1969 and 1973. It was first formalized by the American National Standards Institute in 1988. C was invented to write Unix operating systems. Linux, OS, PHP, and MySQL are all written in C. C is a successor of B language. C programs consist of modules or pieces called functions. You can program all the functions you need to form a C program, but most C programmers take advantage of a rich collection of existing functions called the C standard library. When programming in C, you will typically use the following building blocks. First is the C standard library functions. These are what we call predefined functions. Second are the functions you create yourself. And lastly, functions other people have created and made available to you. In C programming, we can use different functions, but we cannot use them unless we include the library they belong to. But we are not limited to using these functions. We can also create our own functions depending on the program that we want to create. There are really two pieces to learning how to program in C. The first is learning the C language itself. And the second is learning how to use the functions in the C standard library. So that sums up the C standard library. And now let's proceed with the last topic, the C program development environment. C systems generally consist of several parts, a program development environment, the language, and the C standard library. C programs typically go through six phases to be executed. These are the edit, preprocess, compile, link, load, and execute. Phase 1 is creating a program, 
or what we call edit. This is the time that you create or edit a C program using an editor. You make corrections if necessary, then store the computer program on a secondary storage device such as a hard disk. The C program file names should end with the .c extension. Phase 2 and 3 are pre-processing and compiling a C program. Once you are done with editing, you now give the command to compile the program. So in a C system, a preprocessor program executes automatically before the compiler's translation phase begins. The C preprocessor obeys special commands called preprocessor directives, which indicate that certain manipulations are to be performed on the program before compilation. These manipulations usually consist of including other files in the file to be compiled. In phase 3, the compiler translates the C program into machine language code, also known as the object code, and stores it on disk. So the compiler translates the C program, which is the high-level language, into a machine language code, which is also referred to as object code. Phase 4, we have linking. The C programs typically contain references to functions defined elsewhere, such as in the standard libraries. We are now going to link the standard library with our C program. The standard library serves as references to the functions that we are using. So therefore, in a C standard library, there are several functions. And these functions, before we could use them, we have to link the library where they belong to. Phase 5 is loading. Before a program can be executed, the program must first be placed in the memory. This is done by the loader, which takes the executable image from disk and transfers it to the memory. Take note that when we say disk, we are referring to the secondary storage unit or the hard disk. And when we say transfer it to memory, we are referring to the primary memory, which is a short-term memory, which functions with the CPU. And lastly, the phase 6 is the execution. So finally, the computer under the control of its CPU takes each instruction and executes the program one instruction at a time, possibly storing new data values as the program executes. So the figure that you see on screen is a typical C development environment. We have first is to edit the program. If we are editing, we are using an editor. That means whenever we save it, it is saved on a secondary storage device or what we call the hard disk. We should save it with an extension name of .c. And once that we are done editing our computer program, pre-processing and compiling is done. But for it to function well, there should be a link between our C program linked in a specific standard library that we use. And before the program can be executed, the program must first First be placed in memory. Once it is placed in the primary memory, the CPU functions. So this is what we call the execution. When the CPU controls what happens, when the CPU takes each instruction and executes the program. So that ends the C program development environment topic. So that ends this video and I hope you have learned from the introductory part of this programming course. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something from this video.